Was singing better in the 80s? Hey gang, Ken Tamplin from Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. I thought it would be interesting to take a look at several different decades of singing and decide if singing was actually better in the 80s. So I printed up quite a list here and come to my surprise, I kind of think it was. However, I value your opinion. So if you feel differently and you want to put your favorite vocalist in the comments section, that would be great. But I'm just going to rattle off a few people here and I think you might find this fascinating. Now this is in no particular order, but I thought that as I went through the 80s and then I in fairness have to go back to the 70s and then I'm going to dip into the 90s, we can juxtapose the few again and uh, take a look at this. So in the 80s, who did we have? Well, we had Michael Jackson, Freddie Mercury, Stevie Wonder, Steve Perry, Prince and Wilson, Steve Walsh. And they're going to say, Aah! hold on, Ken. Some of those guys were actually from the 70s and that's a fair comment, but I want to make two other comments along the way. Most of their greatest success either happened as a spillover from 70s into the 80s or was predominant in the 80s, okay? So that's important. The second thing that you're gonna throw at me is, well, wait a minute, you know, what about in the 20s, 30s, 40s, what style are we talking about? Opera, crooner styles, jazz, you know? I'm talking about the mass around the world and the total sum of eyeballs on people who had the greatest influence over time on the greatest masses of people, okay? So we stopped at Ann Wilson, Steve Walsh, Freddie Mercury, David Coverdale, Paul Rogers, Sebastian Bach, Brad Delp, Dio, John Lennon, Ozzy Osbourne, Bono, Billy Joel, Sting, Phil Collins, Axl Rose, Joe Elliott, Mariah Carey, Elton John, Getty Lee. We're just dipping into the 80s, folks. Check this out. Mick Jagger, of course, 70s, yes. Pavarotti, but his fame was also in the 70s. Um, David Bowie, Brian Adams, George Michael, Whitney Houston, James Hetfield, Brian Johnson, Get I already said Getty Lee, Donnie, Donna Summer, Stevie Nicks, Celine Dion, Bruce Dickinson, Rob Halford, Lionel Richie, John Bon Jovi, Robert Plant, Dennis DeYoung. Yes, Robert Plant was predominant in the 70s, but they spilled in the 80s as well. Um, Kevin Cronin, Tina Turner, Huey Lewis, Daryl Hall, Pat Benatar, Steven Tyler, uh, Elton John, Rod Stewart, Lou Graham, Bobby Kimball, Bob Seger, The Pointer Sisters, Stevie Nicks, Paul McCartney, Billy Idol, Michael Hutchins, Don Henley, Gloria Stefan, Luther Vandross, Peter Satira, John Anderson, Robert Palmer, Kenny Loggins, Sade, Stevie Winwood, Klaus Mine, Deborah Harry, Eddie Money, Anita Baker, Mike Reno, Joan Jett, Paul Carrick, Aretha Franklin, Patti LaBelle, Earth, Wind and Fire, Paul Stanley, Marvin Gaye, hang in there, I'm almost done, Ken, you're not gonna just read this list. Hang in there, hang in there, hang in there, this will be interesting. Marvin Gaye, Billy Squire, Tom Kiefer, Bonnie Raitt, Air Supply, Richard Marks, Bruce Hornsby, Mickey Thomas, Richard Page, Irene Cara, John, I already said John Lennon, Terrence Trent Darby, Rick Springfield, Black Sabbath, Europe, John Farham, John Farnham, Jeff Tate, Rick Emmett, Sammy Hagar, uh, Millie Medicevic, Michael uh, Michael Kiske, Andy Darris, uh, Michael Sweet, Ken Tamplin, <laughs> Dave Manichetti, Jimmy Jameson, Shaka Khan, Michael Bolton, Gina Vanelli, Tony Lewis, Mickey Thomas, Holland Oates, Robert, uh, Roberta Flack, Al Jarreau, John Waite, George Benson, Peter Gabriel, Linda Rodstead, Smokey Robinson, Al Green, um, uh, James Ingram, Neil Diamond, Barbara Streisand, Tom Petty, Kim Carnes, Steve Winwood. I didn't even add any country, any jazz, or any other style of music. That's all I added for the 80s. Now, I know that was probably an arduous list to have to suffer through. Uh, I was gonna throw some of the pictures about, you know, flying back and forth, so at least it makes it a little more interesting for you guys to check out. Now, why do I say this? Well, I say because we look at genres of music and we say, you know, what was the best era or decade of music, right? A lot of people say it was the 60s, man, or it was the 70s, or it was the 80s. Well, what I think is really fascinating is that as you look at different decades of music, you can really see where the culture and where the people were, the general populace, society as a whole. Um, so I wanna dip back into the 70s because I did put some of the same artists in the 70s out of fairness so that we could recognize them coming from then. So let's blast into the 70s here. So we have Stevie Wonder, Robert Plant, Elton John, Roger Waters, David uh, Gilmore, Mick Jagger, Don Henley, Glenn Frey, Joe Walsh, 
Fra Freddie Mercury, Roger Daltrey, Ozzy Osbourne, Dio, Getty Lee, Aretha Franklin, David Bowie, Paul McCartney, The Isley Brothers, Fleetwood Mac, John Lennon, Bee Gees, Marvin Gaye, Peter Cetera, Bob Marley. So you can see there's a lot of spillovers. So a lot of these guys did come and were they were rooted, so to speak, in the 70s. Jackson 5, of course. Earth, Wind & Fire, Al Green, Paul Stanley, Leonard Skinner, Eric Clapton, Alice Cooper, Gladys Knight and the Pips, Allman Brothers Band, Steven Tyler, Rod Stewart, OJs, Bob Seger, Steve Miller, Beach Boys, George Harrison, Sly and the Family Stone, Peter Frampton, Elvis Presley, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, Billy Joel, Ian Gillen, David Coverdale, Glenn, uh, Glenn Hughes, John Fogarty, Three Dog Night, Temptations, Brad Delp. I mean, I'm, I'm coming to a close. Hang in there. You're going to find this interesting. Now, as I look at this again, in fairness, I'm not even mentioning Motown. I'm not even mentioning soul like I should, right? But I'm just trying to get like the glut and the and the, the creme de la creme of even a couple of those little genres and putting a couple names in here. So I'm not going to bore you with an encyclopedia of names, but a, a dictionary of names. But Jackson Brown, Joni Mitchell, Bon Scott, Doobie Brothers, John Anderson, ZZ Top, Randy Bachman, Emerson Lake and Palmer, Staple Singers. John, uh, James Taylor, Barry White, Ian Anderson, Paul Rogers, Steely Dan, Santana, Moody Blues, Electric Light Orchestra, Grand Funk Railroad, Greg Rowley and Steve Perry, Lou Graham, Ray, Char uh, Ray Davies, Steve Walsh, Ann Wilson, Donna Summer, Paul Simon, Linda Rodstad, Dennis DeYoung and Tommy Shaw, Jim Morrison, Van Morrison, Deborah Harry, David Lee Ross, Sammy Hagar, Foghat, Phil Collins, Jay Giles Band, James Brown, Carol King, Janis Joplin, Dan Diana Ross, Alvin Lee, Robin Zander, Joe Cocker, Tom Petty, last list here, Mickey Thomas, Ted Nugent, The Supremes, Edgar Winter, Sweet, Uriah Heep, Bill Withers, Carly Simon, Dan McCafferty, uh, Rob Halford, Phil Lynott, T-Rex, The Knack, and The Hollies. Now, that was the 70s. But if I take the sum of the 70s and I add them to the 80s, most all of the people from the 70s, they translated or they crossed over, cross-pollinated into the 80s, right? So the 80s list is actually almost not quite double of the 70s because then you had all of the 80s artists combined with that, all the 80s metal bands and all the different 80s pop bands that happened. And there's so many pop artists I didn't even mention. I just, like I said, I just try to get kind of more Cora, more on the rock side because, you know, I like that sound myself personally. But I say this because I'm going to fascinate you hopefully with something else. Let's do the 90s now. Now, if I'm missing somebody and you said, Ken, you know, you miss somebody, Please put that in the comment sections. But we have Nirvana. By the way, I, I list bands too because some people, if I say a name of a band, like if I said, I, I don't know, if I said Credence, you may not know it was John Fogarty. Some of you out there would. But if I said something a little bit more secure, uh, obscure, um, you know, or an obscure band, I said the band's name so you'd recognize that band rather than just naming off the singer. So. so uh, we all know Nirvana was Kurt Cobain. We all know Pearl Jam was Eddie Vedder. But anyway, Radiohead, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Mariah, Beck, The Smashing Pumpkins, R.E.M., Alice in Chains, Green Day. Now, this is the 90s. Green Day, Soundgarden, Chris Cornell, Nine Inch Nails, Rage Against the Machine, Jeff Buckley, Tool, Public Enemy, Faith No More, Bjork, Korn, P.J. Harvey, Tori Amos, Fish, Sonic Youth, Weezer, Oasis, Dave Matthews, Primus, Blur, Jane's Addiction, Snoop Dogg. They actually put him in the sub singers. There was a bunch of rap guys and I'm like, you can't call these guys singers, but nonetheless, there's a few of them that snuck in there. Stone Temple Pilots, which you talked about. Uh, My Bloody Valentine, Pantera, Sublime, Dream Theater, if different incarnations. Uh, Marilyn Manson, The Offspring, Seal, TLC, Liz Fair, The Fugees, Manic Street, um, excuse me, Manic Street Preachers, uh, Let's see, Blush, Jay-Z, Outkast, The Verve, Foo Fighters, Sepultura, Prince, Silverchair, Flaming Lips, Black Crows, 311, Pixies, Alanis Morissette, uh, Sinead O'Connor, Missy Elliott, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, Laura Hill, Hole, Lenny Kravitz, The Roots, Temple of the Dog, Garage, Garbage, excuse me, <laughs> Gar Garbage. Um, let's see, The Mighty Mighty Boss Tones, Mr. Jungle, Slayer, Danny, uh, The Dandy Warhols, Cheryl Crow, Buster Rhymes, Blind Melon, Kenny Wayne Shepherd, Creed, Arrested Development, Screaming Trees, Wilco, Fugazi, Hooting the Blowfish, Matchbox 20, Blues Traveler, Ministry, and Bare Naked Ladies. Now, when I go through this list, it's just my opinion, okay? And my opinion is just my opinion. But if I were to look at the caliber and if I were to say, well, if I looked at REM or if I looked at Green Day or, and I'm trying to use the creme de la creme here, if I looked at, you know, Tool or, you know, Bjork or Korn or PJ Harvey or, you know, some of these Tori Amos or Sonic Youth or Weezer or Primus or Blur, 
Could I honestly say that any of these singers, there's a few, of course, there's Lane Steady, there's Cornell, there's, you know, there's a lot of guys in here that are iconic, Mariah, you know, that are in here. But per capita, per capita of all the singers from the 90s, can I honestly say that these singers were better singers in every way, that they outlasted the other singers? Well, I guess time will tell, maybe it hasn't been long enough, but maybe it has. And was there enough of um, a long lasting career of you know decades of doing this to really showcase how great they really were or are? And I'm just gotta say, man, when I juxtapose Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Radiohead, Red Hot Chili Peppers to Stevie Wonder, Robert Plant, Elton John, Mick Jagger, Don Henley, Freddie Mercury, you know, Aretha Franklin, David Bowie, Paul McCartney, you know, John Lennon, Bee Gees, there's no comparison, I don't think. And I don't think there's any way to compare the art. Now, again, in fairness, now I wanna, I wanna address something else that's happening. And I'm gonna do some other interesting things coming up. But in, in, in around the 90s, we sort of lost the guitar hero, okay? And there were guitar heroes for sure, but it became the beginning of the end of, of losing the kind of driving force. Now, if there's a lot, Aretha, you wouldn't say there's a guitar hero factor, or Stevie Wonder was a keyboard factor, right? So there's a lot, Elton John, piano. So there's a lot of, of, of 70s, 80s guys that weren't driven by that. But sort of at the death of Eddie Van Halen, God rest his soul, um, we, we sort, sort of saw the, the end of an era, a complete end of you know 60s, 70s, 80s, and even early 90s rock kind of come to a close because no one has really stepped into the plate. Now, yes, there's Joe Satriani. Yes, there's, you know, uh, Steve Vise. Yes, there's, you know, all these great guitar players that are out there. Um, but it, it, have we sort of completely divested ourselves or have we siphoned out and completely lost that to a lot of the modern music? And I'm going to get to that in another video. But I just thought it was important from a singing standpoint that at the advent of losing guitar hero rock, let's call it, we lost a lot of the singing heroes in the process because they kind of went hand in hand, especially in the rock world. Not so much in the pop, but in the rock world we did. And so now we're seeing sort of the the byproduct of that in a lot of the newer music, you go to Spotify and I look what Rick Beato's done and he's taken all these different, you know, songs in Spotify and he's like, if it couldn't get any worse, you know I mean? He plays you more, right? Uh, so awesome job on that, Rick. Um, I ironically have something else I was gonna do that was related to that, not your thing, but something I wanted to do. Um, anyway, and so as we see this, I have to say that my vote is probably the 80s with a heavy bent on the 70s and obviously some amazing talent in the 90s but I have to say that the 80s were the best time for vocalists, especially rock vocalists. Please put your comments, uh, put your feelings in the comments section and let me know your thoughts. Um, again, thank you for joining me, Ken Temple Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. And until next time, peace out. I'm gonna sing.